So I've never played Bloodborne. I don't know anything about Bloodborne lore. I've seen some people play it, but I don't really understand what's going on in the game. So as someone that's never played it, I'm going to watch a Maxor reaction of Bloodborne to see how much I can actually glean from it and then come back and we'll do a rendezvous on how much I've learned about Bloodborne after watching this video. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go! Spoilers. Bloodborne is a Lovecraftian horror RPG that no one understands by definition, where the player is free to attack hordes of human human children at will and consume their innards. If that in-depth and engaging anti-baby gameplay appeals to you, keep listening because it gets worse. In this game, you play as John Bloodborne. Oh, hold on, am I, am I playing this at 1.25? This is normal playback speed? Jesus Christ. Okay, okay, so what I've gleaned so far, uh, in Bloodborne, there's a ton of blood, there's babies, you eat umbilical cords. This is a very anti-baby game, which is great because babies suck and I hate them, they're awful. They're incapable of speech without the use of sign language and stricken with Habsburg disease comes to the ancient city of London, seeking treatment for the sins of his cousins. In doing so, he will begin hallucinating talking dolls, spider people, and the great people of our journey further. John so you hallucinate, okay. into the service of a gay elder god and the 60-year-old man he keeps as a pet, and is given the ultimate task of killing an- Wait, did he just say gay elder god? That's an awesome. ...invisible infant in order to cure his anemia. To accomplish said Herculean task, the player must journey through dark forests, terrifying nightmares, and the meth-ridden alleyways of a post- Brexit Britain slay <laughs> That's exactly what Britain looks like right now. Monsters exploring and tricking women into being impregnated by God so you can consume the child. This game is an excellent realization of a Metroidvania with something new around every corner. A great action RPG which pits you against insurmountable odds and extreme challenges. And I I've heard that people absolutely love Bloodborne. It's like one of the greatest games of all time. I mean, if what you're saying is true, then uh, I mean, I can see why. I've never played a FromSoft game. Maybe I should dive into that one day. However, I get angry very easily at dying in video games and I'm kind of a spoiled sport and would probably be very upset. It has a gripping story and lore about discovering the Eldritch Truth. So if you can't- The Eldritch play Truth, yourself, okay. Because I'm not going to hold back on the details. It's no- Yeah, no, give me, give me all the gruesome details. I want to hear every little blood spurt. I want to hear every little sanguinary no tale. That my reviews are entertainment first, so I don't suggest using me as genuine advice. Oh, well, I mean, that's unfortunate because that's exactly what I'm going to do, man. Uh, sorry. <laughs> However, Is that a YouTuber? people can't play this game ever because you have to buy what? a $400 magical box sold by the wizard Sony in order to experience it. And even then, you get to see it in an amazing 30 frames per second with no nice. anti-aliasing. Port this game to PC, I beg of you. In I think they're going to release it on PlayStation 5, though, aren't they? I mean, if they don't, then that would be absolutely ridiculous. But I'm pretty sure they're going to do some I kind of point, by the way. A lot of people watching this video will basically never play the game. But keep watching because I, yes, I'm true. hilarious and original. Do that. True. And I can give you the full, unfiltered, uncensored, unsubstantiated, and unsportsmanlike experience that is... Bloodborne. Dude, what an intro. Oh my god. I, I can only imagine that Maxor has like become one with his editing software that he dived into his PC and took over it as mind and CPU melded to create this because there's no way that a normal human being can create a video like this. The gameplay is what makes this game great, and the easiest way to describe it is simple but complicated. On a simple level, your baby brain is responsible for only two tasks, dodging and hitting. And dodging in this game renders you temporarily invincible. Sounds easy, right? Nice. Wrong. Because every single enemy is adjusted to keep pace with you. Basic enemies are basically able to whoop your ass into fucking non-existence. Every encounter, therefore, is tense and engaging. When you kill someone, it's because you were faster and had more meth than they did. On a... <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm learning. I'm taking notes right now. You have to have a ton of meth to play this game. Complicated awesome. level, you have a gun, and normally bullets hurt people, but in London, bullets are a suggestion. Like the That is true. Uh, just like in real life, uh, we banned guns in 1999, uh, that, so bullets don't actually do anything. When you bring a, a gun from America to the UK, you can't actually use it because we have force fields around us created by the Queen and powered by the blood of the innocents. The Geneva Convention. Here in England, it's all about the knife bit. Except when you shoot somebody mid-attack, you gain the mystical and arcane ability to plunge your fist through their ribcage like Mortal Kombat and rip out nice. their heart, which is considered rude and a slight annoyance. This extends to behind them if you- That is very British, yes. Uh, anything that happens, even the worst possible things, being decapitated is uh, a bit unnecessary and a slight Charge annoyance. An attack, which sometimes causes you to reach up a pig's asshole and rip out the prostate like fruit by the foot. Side
I'm pretty sure David Cameron did that before he was elected prime minister. The most optimal farming route for currency in this game is called Murgo's Pig Fisting Route. See, I what? changed the webpage. And in this route, oh, you okay. sneak up behind this guy and do him the dirty. Then entice these two swindler bastards to be multi- They have so many eyes! Why do they have so many eyes? Repeat 50 times. On a complicated level, every single weapon in the game has two different modes with two different movesets. And transforming between them gives you special attacks in addition to running attacks, plunging attacks, 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 quite catch that last one. Level. Your Got the other ones though. Squiggly lines and fridge art created by gods for passive bonuses that work regardless of weaponry. My favorites are more money, more money, and more money. They nice. Yeah, that, that's a very, uh, those sound pretty freaking epic. Increases blood echoes by 30%. That. Finally, on a meta theoretical chiropractic level, every weapon is customizable with different gem slots that give differing effects for your attacks. And there are different types that can literally change all of the stats of the weapon. Like making a fucking spear do more damage based off of intelligence. There's definitely- <laughs> Well, that means you're just smart enough to stab where you're supposed to stab. That makes complete sense. What are you talking really about? More and a lot of strategy and how you level up your character. But I assume that you know how to level up in a fucking video game. But with yeah, all this I'm, combat prowess, I'm awesome at games. Maxor, who are these crusty abominations that you're fighting on screen? Well, I was just thinking, Maxor, who are these crusty abominations that you're fighting on to screen? Learn that much, we're going to have to delve into the lore. So let's go, baby! Riches, bitches, because this shit is wild. If I say something questionable, just accept it as fact. I can be okay. trusted. Sixty years ago, twenty. Rowdy college students took their education extremely seriously because they Good, found as they should. Cthulhu. She was just in a portable toilet downstairs. Also, because they were bored, they beat to death a god of the sea with some bats, but that's a story for later. It turns out the okay. entire world is ruled and created by a race of elder gods beyond human comprehension called the Great Ones. Figuring this out, they got Cthulhu's blood and were like, we can make a religion out of this. Because it turns nice. out. Hey, is that, a, is that a Bill Watts reference in the that? Blood can heal people, which is really good due to all the knife crime. So everyone starts drinking it a little too much and they get the money to build 36 cathedrals, but it turns out eventually the blood turns you into a werewolf. So the church oh, that's a really unfortunate. German to go fight the beasts with an organization known as the Hunters, but there's too many beasts, so he gives up. Now the knife crime- Alright, so what I've taken so far is this is really hard to absorb all this information. There is an organization called the Hunters, and they're hunting down these monstrosities that were created because the blood that was using to heal people, they were using to heal people, eventually turned them into giant beasts because of the- the elder, the elder great one gods, the, the and the thirty six cathedral crime is increased even more, and German sort of goes insane and creates a life size doll of one of his students who is an eight foot tall Amazonian. He also canonically okay. has sex with it. The moon god, what? for some reason, kind of takes notice of this and is like, "All right, listen, I'm building a suicide squad. I will bring your waifu to lifeu if you serve me for all time as my slave." German. That's not the main story. It can't be. A great deal and is imprisoned in a dream. This is where you come in. See, the moon god assassinates baby gods for fun, but needs a hitman to go into the real world to do it, since he's confined to the ninth sure. dimension. So, in addition to fighting all manner of giant beasts and uncovering dark secrets, the true aim of this game is to commit infanticide. There's enough bullshit- Okay, so you're acting as an emissary from the moon god because he can't come down in his physical form to go and kill other gods because he likes killing other gods and he wants to be the Here only god. The tax legislation, so comment your own poorly summarized Bloodborne lore below. And for the rest of us non-shills, we have ample time to explain more of what makes this game great. Okay. Yes. I think I think I'm doing I think I'm I'm doing a pretty good job at absorbing what's been happening so far. Uh, there's a lot going on, but it sounds pretty freaking I epic. I'm talking about bosses before I talk about the levels. In most video games, bosses cap off areas, but in Bloodborne, areas are preambles to a dick flattening, and nothing will challenge your skill in quite the same way, except for the goddamn witches of Hemwick, who were placed into the game for disability access. You can probably tell that Bloodborne is a hard game. We don't even know if a games journalist can beat it, but it's. <laughs> the games journalist can't do anything, man. What are you talking Hard about? Hard in a fair way that tests your skills and reaction time, except for Lawrence, but I'll get back to Lawrence later. What sets this game's bosses apart is that the challenge makes it feel like you're a really small dude jabbing a toothpick into a building-sized deer demon. I wonder why it makes you feel like that. It's, it's almost like that's exactly what's yeah, happening. I would be impressed if he killed that. But not only that, unlike Dark Souls, every single boss reacts meaningfully to how you attack them. Large beasts can have their bones cracked and their tendons wound into a slinky. Bone boys can be knocked over and have their marrow shipped. And human enemies will wince and recoil when they see your height difference. As well, every boss punishes you for cowardice and actively discourages backpedaling with their forward momentum, causing a- 
Oh, cool. So the entire point of the gameplay is to force you to basically get in a situation where you have to be constantly in contact with them. That's really cool. An elaborate dance with a thrilling back and forth. Unless you're fighting Rom, who is the really hungry caterpillar, if he had a legion of arachnid slaves who threw their heads underground like ostriches. Oh, we don't Jesus talk Christ. About him. And while we're on the subject of bad bosses, this motherfucker, let me tell you something. The humanoid bosses in this game are paradoxically the most dangerous. But Mikalash is a psychological hazard that will hurt you personally. This boss literally feels like cut content because the fight centers around chasing him and his direction depends on RNG, making him an actual speedrun killer. When you corner him, he uses one attack and then you chase him again. Where he it's like me in a fighting game. I run away the entire time and then when I get caught, I just spam down B with Kirby over and over again. the power to insta-kill you. God forbid you're hit by it because that's 10 minutes gone. Here's a tip. Save up 10 poison knives and steal from your family if you must. Then wait until he jumps down this hole, poison him repeatedly and watch him spaz the fuck out until death. You will think nice. me. But as a result of everyone who isn't Miko shit, conquering a boss in this game is absolutely rewarding on a level that other games cannot match. It's only because the odds are stacked against you in ways that don't feel bullshit most of the time that conquering them is the main reason I play, and their fights are undoubtedly the best I've ever done. How many arms but that they need? Most of the time in the game. In fact, a lot of your time is spent exploring the areas, so let's get into that. Lesson one in area design. Where the fuck am I going? Exploration is the name. That's what worried me about these FromSoft games as well, as I just have no idea where to go or what to do 99% of the time. Game, except it's I'm a baby dumb brain. I need a, like a Skyrim compass to point it at me and be like, go to this character and press A, you stupid moron. Oh, Bloodborne. Only this time, you don't bring smallpox and kill 20 million people. We're looking at a solid 10 this time because the main enemies in this game are British townspeople. It's how the developers made sure you didn't feel bad about killing them. The play it's okay. The main enemy in this game is me. That's fantastic. It's that's good to hear. Beast infecting London causes people's teeth to become beast-like, makes you aggressive at night. Realistically, that's not changing British teeth much. <laughs> Am I right, fellas? Our teeth is fine. Shut up. Slurs your speech. So it's up to oh, you I to miss stop Boris. them as a hunter should. If you don't look up where to go next in this game, good fucking luck. People get lost all the time. Get used to it. This game doesn't do exploration like, oh look, there's loot in this hallway. My dopamine's gonna go crazy. That's baby shit. This is daddy's True. exploration where you that's find for me. back to a place you were in ten hours ago. And I hope you weren't expecting a mini map or any map. Every single hallway is a rabbit hole of discovery and your hand isn't held. Case in point, Cathedral Ward is a level but feels like a hub area because it connects to fucking everything. And where you start the game is in the middle of a loop-de-loop -loop involving Jesus Christ, there's so much to do. Look at the fucking map of this game. Look at that. Okay, I mean, that's not that bad. It's a little bit convoluted, but yeah, you, know, you could probably find your way around. Not, you know, not so easily, but it wouldn't be that everything hard. overlaps. And yes, there is... It's not like you have to make an Excel spreadsheet about where There's you're going. It's called Nightmare Lecture Hall, and no, it does not connect to the Altar of Despair, although you would think that. Fittingly, the Lecture Hall is the smallest area, and more fittingly, 90% of the combat is graduates throwing cum at you. The game also has two completely... <laughs> it's just like going to a real university in the UK. areas that you would not find without the internet. I would tell you how to enter, but I don't want to do calculus. And what you get at the end? Upper Cathedral Ward is legitimately a horror area in a game loved for its combat, because it's filled with enemies who act out my greatest fear. Stealing currency permanently gives me fucking chills every time I talk about it. Castle Kanehurst is proof that From Software hates us all, since the best area in the entire game requires you to go to the Field of Corn in Ohio and trek down Waldo. But oh god, no one wants to go to Ohio. That's the worst possible place that you could go to. No one would ever it's get worth there. It to invade the house of that parasitic queen dwelling in her demented castle. Yes, so that she may feel the so true. Proletariat. All we have to do is kill Prince Philip, who guards the way as an. Oh, oh, that's a bit awkward. So I think Prince Philip took that a bit too seriously. He's like, I want to, I want to play Bloodborne and just like Kobe did the spot. On top of this, there are numerous NPCs and NPC quest lines spread throughout the world, all with a series of interactions with each other depending on location and timing. For instance, you could direct nuns, prostitutes, and Prince Philip to a church run by a lonely black <laughs> sludge, then perform. There's so much Prince Philip slander going on here. It's fantastic. Blood transfusions to send the nun into a yandere rage, or you could direct them to the nice woman who runs the clinic down the street, who only wants to help and assist others. Mm, I feel like she doesn't want to only help and assist others. I feel like actually maybe she has some ulterior motives going on. Or maybe they'll subvert that and actually have her be nice. Then take a strange path through the forest and into her clinic to discover that she has been experimenting on all of them in order to create the Blue Man group. And if- Oh no, it's it's blue ba da ba dee da ba die. Da ba dee, they da ba died. Da ba dee da ba die. Take the umbilical cord away from her schizophrenic ass and eat it. The sky's the limit. Did you say one third of an umbilical cord? I'm sorry, how do you get one third of an umbilical 
umbilical cord. Why are you cutting up umbilical cords into thirds and scattering them across the region? The Bloodborne quest lines. And you know what my favorite quest line is? The one where you descend into literal hell, complete with eternal punishment, insanity, and I didn't know they had a Doom the DLC. I'm of course. Does it say fanboy fishing? Also, is this on two times speed? No, this is on normal speed. Do you want me to put it on two times speed and we'll see how that goes? Of course, talking about the DLC, the only DLC for this game. And if you play through blood- Okay, I'm already anxious. Let's go put it back to normal, shall we? Born, you have to play through the DLC. I'm not giving you a fucking choice. So to learn why, you should play the best expansion ever made since Spore Galactic Adventures. Jump jungles. Come with me on this amazing journey to find the secrets of the Bloodborne, the old hunters. Nice, part three, baby. Okay. I want you to imagine hell. Now imagine hell. <laughs> I just shut up. Dude, there's so much British slander in this. I mean, not that we don't deserve it. Let me tell you, I love British slander. British slander is hilarious when it's done right. And he's doing it right in this video. This isn't just like Tuesday, bottle of water, ha ha ha, British people sound funny. This is like proper British slander, which is like, I can definitely appreciate. We get Italian slander as well. That's rare. You don't see that much. Like this is a, a rare gold plated slander. HP Lovecraft. It will be filled with squids, immigrants, and air conditioning. This DLC has none of that except the squids. For you see, those college kids from the the lore section of the video were built fucking different. They experimented on an entire village and possibly beat up a god of the sea so fucking bad that her consciousness in the ninth dimension died. We spent an entire game killing an infant and these guys somehow killed the milf god. But anyways, in the, the process of this, it cursed them and all of the hunters to be doomed to a hell upon death where they will hunt in a bloodthirsty rage without rest for all eternity. I mean, that doesn't sound that bad. I mean, if, if you're a corn worshiper in Warhammer, that sounds like a bloody brilliant time. A political subreddit. Case in point, this is Ludwig. He's the first boss of the DLC. L Ludwig, oh, is this what happens after Ludwig retires from streaming? He has a reputation for causing refunds. Not because he's bad, causing but refunds? because he's too good for you. The first phase is as difficult for me as realizing that Golden Corral is not actually a real corral. But like every restaurant except not? Golden Corral, the rewards at the end are delicious. Wait a minute, you're gonna tell me Burger King's not actually a king? Don't do it. Just because his second phase is even harder. Now, I'm not going to lie, this DLC has four bosses and three of the hardest bosses I have ever fought in any video game ever. So your ass will be nice. the entire time. And the fact that he's the third hardest is fucking concerning. Some people tell me, Maxor, your videos have gotten me through tough times because they made me laugh. But like this boss, you are the one who is truly overcoming these challenges. And I believe in your ability to beat both of them. King boss lightning round. The DLC has many such cases. Good job, King. Bosses, including Lady Maria, who is the basis for German's extremely creepy eight foot tall doll fetish. But we'll oh, this is the original woman that a doll was made out of. Nice. And we're getting back into the law portion of the video. Thank God I was, I was beginning to miss all the good law that we Within were getting of here. Cause, who was born from the literal dead body of a god. If you enjoy the sensation of being beaten to death with a sharpened placenta, this is the fight for you. And as I mean, I, I've been saying they keep wasting placentas. They always get rid of it after the child's born. I'm like, come on, guys, you can at least like use it, turn it into a weapon or something along those lines. With everything that From Software makes, they threw in a boss that they didn't really finish and called it a day. I'm of course talking about Lawrence, which is a very mundane name for a fire monster locked in hell. Take my- Well, sometimes if you want to make things really hard, the best thing to do is just stop developing halfway fight. through. Don't fight, Lawrence. You only lose a part of yourself. Since this boss fights you by dropping off his own legs and then violently vomiting and shitting lava everywhere. I've always- I wish Bowser would do that. Can you imagine if at the end of Mario Odyssey, Bowser just like turns into this thing? I wanted my game about dynamic dodging and elaborate fencing to be reduced to shitty area denial like it's Team Fortress 2. To wrap things up, the music of this game is pretty good, but the DLC music is fucking insane. I don't know what it is about Japanese composers being able to make better symphonies than the continent that invented them, but just- take True! So true! Holy shit, I'm alive right now. Have you ever thought, as I do, that this game is just too good? That you would really rather be playing a shittier version of the game? Such as the engagement of the Chalice Dungeons. I, of course, jest. They're fine, probably, except for half of them. Because Bloodborne has an optional system of infinite dungeon generation. For oh no, procedural generation? That's how you kill a video game. That's how you make sure that you're not having fun anymore. It's like the Fallout 4 quests where the dude is saying, Oh, you, there's a settlement that needs your help over and over again like yes Preston Garvey I know I'm not having fun with this anymore Preston shut up Preston oh. For all of those who wish to break free of the shackles of good level design let's talk about how and more importantly why 
First the of Chalice all. Chalice Dungeon? Is this like the DLC for this? Is this like the Mass Effect 1 DLC Pinnacle Station or whatever it was that, that was just combat and it sucked and no one liked Bloodborne it? Bloodborne has a system of dungeons that everyone shares and dungeons that are random. For my footage, I played the shared dungeons that you can be guaranteed the pain you witness on screen is mandatory. One of the biggest strengths of Bloodborne is the ability to have interesting and challenging enemy encounters gently rubbed with the bloodstained hands of Miyazaki. But I don't think I have to explain to you how randomizing almost every encounter in the game could be imbalanced. But fortunately, most enemies you encounter in the Chalice Dungeons are new to spare British people your wrath. So you would- Thank God, the British people have gone through enough recently, okay? Liz Truss is our Prime Minister now. Instead, fight SCP-96, but why are we here? It turns out that the entire city of London was built on a Celtic burial ground, an ancient civilization uh -oh. called the Tumerians who discovered the healing powers of blood and then mysteriously disappeared. Wait, the, isn't that what happened in the main story of Bloodborne? They, just, they discover the healing powers of blood and then turn into werewolves? Wow, I wonder what happened. This is all cool in theory, but the reality is that most of the time, you fight the same four enemies, and the first three dungeons can be replaced by Simon Says. My cat literally wouldn't notice. The <gasps> Chalice dungeons Cats? are so forgotten that the developers use them to put joke enemies into the game. My favorite is the man who aggressively rolls at you, stark naked, wearing only his Nikes. The uniqueness also- He was so slimy and sweaty and moist. Oh god, that was extends to the disgusting. bosses, and they're actually pretty cool, like two Marian descendant, watchdog, and the three overweight men. Do you remember that basic enemy from like two levels? He is the boss now. Rom, he is the boss again. The only thing stopping me from throwing myself into a wood chipper is the fact that Miklash isn't back. And if you're going to have replays, you probably want to make sure that they're actually good. In fact, the bosses are so fucking imbalanced that the watchdog fight is primarily comprised of instant kill attacks. I be Oh no, you can't do that. No, especially not on these hard games. Like one hit kill attacks. Most of the attacks are gonna be one hit kill attacks. And if I, if any of my viewing of Dark Souls games or FromSoft games are to be accurate, most attacks are gonna one shot you. 99% of the time anyway, but just random insta kill attacks are bullshit. He wrote backwards on a keyboard and this shit is too fucking much. Now normally that would be all, but the dungeons go deeper. What we have discussed so far is merely the surface and there is a much darker syndicate lying just below. These places you must never venture for they are the save edit dungeons, whereby through wizardry the community are able to conjure up deep dark chasms and share them with the rest of the world. Of these secrets there are only two that I shall reveal to you and the first is the cub dungeon. Yeah. Yes, finally a good yes, dungeon. You heard that correctly and clearly. The cum dungeon Go is the on, name of give the it most to me. optimal farming route ever conceived by the fucking cricket people who do this shit. Whereby the player enters the chasm of place name and watches as a high level boss yeets itself off a cliff. Murgo's pig fisting route can give you 10,000 echoes. This gives 83,000. And if you thought that that sorcery was bad, it gets much worse. You can insert anything from the game files by save editing a chalice dungeon anything. This includes cut and unfinished content from the game that the developers forgot to delete, like this dog. Yes. No, they didn't forget to delete it. It's just the ultimate challenge. You think Bloodborne is hard? No, the true final boss is you have to save edit the game to get the cut content back into the game and then beat that and then you've beaten Bloodborne. You invisible lightning. Overall, the Chalice Dungeons are bad. They're not actually very fun to play and yet I love them. Everyone loves them because they allow us to further explore a long dead game with the help of a passionate community. Now, before we sign off, I know what you're thinking. Maxor, what about the multiplayer? That I would love to talk about with all the footage I have, but it's dead. If this game releases on PC and it better, then I will talk about the multiplayer extensively. And finally, this game and this video would not be complete if I didn't talk about the hunter's dream. After Oh, finally, we're gonna get back to the end of the Draw game the now. Combat, the battles and the difficulty of this game, it's nice to have a place to recharge, purchase items, upgrade weapons, and watch. Oh no, the hunter's dream is like the hub area. Why is it on fire? As it violently burns to the ground. This is where you'll find German slowly wasting away as his soul remains captive for an eternity. And his doll waifu that he sold his existence to be with. She talks to you, levels you up, offers you advice, and German says you're allowed to have sex with her. When oh. Okay, that's kind of weird. I mean, maybe he's into that. They're not even like hanging out, so maybe they broke I up. That'd be unfortunate. I felt defeated. She was there to pick me up. When I emoted at her randomly, she pretended to be impressed. And she was there, graciously I love standing dull in the waifus. background of this one shot that I took of myself. She is our waifu now, and the game is perfect and complete because she True. is in it. Now excuse me as I engage in the supplementary lore material. Should Whoa, hold on a second. <laughs> Let me just uh, make a note of that so I can, you know, look at it. 
up later so I can learn more about <clears throat> Bloodborne lore. Of course. Get the game. Yes, absolutely. I am biased. In fact, you should physically enter Sony's headquarters and demand that it be ported to PC. I will be right there with you. Tasers will not stop me. I would like to thank the corrupt hackers and politicians funneling money into this channel directly from the taxpayer. If you would like to contribute your funds accrued through extensive federal government corruption, you can head to my Patreon to learn more. I would also like to thank the yes. kind denizens of the Mythbuster Smut Discord who sent me the half what? the memes in this video. And Mythbuster Smut? Jesus Christ! Well, that video was absolutely fantastic. What have I learned about Bloodborne? This is why I've learned that it is a realm full of very bloody individuals. And blood is very important because it is the lifeblood, uh, pun intended, of everyone who lives in the land. However, the lifeblood made everyone demon babies. And now the demon babies are running around, but a hunter has been sent to take out the demon babies and the lesser gods by the moon god who cursed an old German man to live with the doll version of some other boss that he now has sex with and likes watching other people have sex with too. If I was close on that Bloodborne lore, let me know in the comments section below and make sure to check out Maxor because his videos are crazy cracked out and completely insane.